All right, guys, we're looking at SPY. We're looking at our watch list to the left. I call it the 5K runner because these are trades that I have taken or plays that I'm, I am basically contemplating on if I'm going to play or not or I'm looking at. This week, focused for cores, GWW, VRTX. BYND will always be a focus every Friday. I only play it on Fridays because the premiums are always expensive. And I'm actually looking to short it this week to open, which is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to play probably very small, you know, but um, I'm going to, I want to short to open Monday and then I want to go long into Friday, depending on how it trades, but I will be watching that all week. Um, we have Neo. I still have my short, my hundred contract, six hundred dollars position with time July 5th, you know, um, that has time. We have um, Han, we have Yum, we have TSN, CTSH, Regeneron, ANTM, Grub. NBS, MET, Burl, Crew, Spy, XPX. For those that love XPX, I know you guys are XPX holics. I'm back to my Spy because I love my Spy. Spy does not do me wrong. And Spy, I feel with Spy, you can trade the last 15 minutes and make way more than you can with XPX. Just my thoughts. Okay? So uh, we're looking at the daily and the weekly for Spy. Below is the weekly, the upper is the daily. The daily is showing that we are finding support at the 30 SMA. So we have two levels, 14 and 30. The 30 SMA is the yellow line, the dotted line here. I'm gonna actually bring this down so it makes more sense. We focus here. These are our FIB extensions. My FIB extensions were drawn, as you can see, and I'll show you the levels that it were drawn from. I actually drew it from this level here brought it up to this level here, and then as soon as it pulled back, well, actually up here, then it pulled back down to this level here. And everything lines up perfectly. So the possibilities we have here is a right shoulder being created. We're gonna possibly stay above 280 for a couple of weeks until we actually push forward to 295 or 300, unless they wanna just take this all away, which is very, very possible, to 295.14. That's the next target which will probably be the tap before another pullback. That's going to be the, our neckline in a sense. Okay, so we have a 30 SMA. I use a 30 SMA on a daily when opening every Monday. Monday's candles, always look for a pullback to this level here. Why I say that is because majority of the time, price comes back down and revisits that and tests it before it actually moves, advances up. Or when price is below it and it, advances up and comes, comes back down, vice versa, right? So that's the daily. I look at the weekly for a reason. We closed above the 30, the 14 SMA, right? What's important to me and what I always look at, and I want you guys to understand and look this at this, is when you open and when you close above a level, a key level, Always expect that key level, which is currently now your new support, which was once resistance, to be your acting support, to be your level that is going to retest once again. It can continue to run up, but it's always going to retest that. Use that, keep that in your mind. So here we have 285.24 on the weekly. If spy gaps down to 285.24, what do we do? We can go long there. We go long 286s the following week. Or we can go long 286s Friday. Use this as a support level, or we can use 286.47 as a support level because this is a FIB level. Also a previous breakout level as well. See as we, what happened here, we vacuumed down to the 30 SMA, and then we basically vacuumed off of it straight above the 14, which was very impressive. So we're looking for, I'm allowing three weeks to hit 305, or at least 300. Not three weeks, sorry, two weeks. So this week, depending on how big the move is going to be, I already said this month is going to be ridiculous. We are going to basically, that loss in May is basically going to basically pay itself. It's going, we're going to make that back. That's, that's exactly what I'm seeing, especially off of this last candle from last week. I look at everything. I look at previous moves, how they acted. We might even gap up. We might gap up. And that's, my, my, that's what I'm thinking. But we're going to gap up possibly inside of this candle. So the high of last week for SPY was 288.85. I'm showing a closing of 287.65.
but I'm also showing last over here differently, 288, whatever that is. So at least we gap up anywhere within here. In, in between 289 to 287.50, which would definitely be fine. Or we pull down. If we gap up, we pull down to 286.47 or use your 14 SMA as a bounce area. So that's for SPY. We won't know much more until futures open and I can give us more of an, an idea of what's going to happen. Now let's get into the fun. Oops. I take my lilac. Let's go VRTX. I got to take that purple off of here. Unlink. All right. Perfect. Perfect. So we have the four hour. We have the daily. We have the weekly and we have the monthly. I want to show you guys something and why I'm so excited for this, this play and why I feel it's ready. Last week, I drew out the inverted head and shoulders on VRTX shown on the four hour. And I'll draw it again. It's actually, it should be in um, chart visuals, unless I already deleted it because I'm cleaning chart videos for the, visuals for the weekend. So I'm going to do a screenshot. It's going to come up here in front. I know you guys can see this because you should be able to see the whole desktop. Right? So I'm going to show you what I'm looking at and what I'm seeing. So here's our head. Left shoulder. And that bounce this week is our right shoulder. Breakout above 176. We need a confirm close. I'm giving it by Wednesday. Confirm close by Wednesday, no later. Tuesday, we should see above. We got a nice candle combo. We had, an inverted hand, uh, we had an inverted candle combo here, as you can see. Long red with a spinning top, which would have been more downside. But if SPY didn't do what it did, we would actually see more downside to touch this level here, which I actually prefer. But in this sense, I like it. It was very controlled. 14 and 30 SMA are actually pinching into reverse because the 30 SMA was actually, well, the 14 SMA was actually pinching down. Now the 14 is pinching up. And pointing up, and the 30 is actually going to be pointing down. Similar to over here. So we have a candle combo closing above 173.22. That was the key level. We got our move that we wanted. We got a 4% move. Worked out great. I think that was Friday. I think it was a 2 or 3%. Three, 2 to 4% move. Target for this one is 180. Weeklies, if you're going to take 180 weeklies, play smart. Small size. A lot of it. It's a test. But if what I'm going to do, I'm looking at the 175 calls. Why? More safer. Actually, let me say this. It's more safer, right? Now I'm going to bring you to the daily chart. I already drawn all my levels that were needed. We closed. <coughs> this, is the first, this is actually not the first candle. But as you can see in this, the, right, the top right corner, I'm actually zooming in. How perfect this setup is. This is a 1430 SMA cross, right? Nice pinch. I'll add the Kellner channel just to, I want to confirm what I'm seeing here. Close perfectly above the middle Kel. Target is always the upper Kel, which is 178.39. But we know how this stock can move. Eight points in a week, 10 points in a week, maybe even 12 points in a week. Target is 184.58. But in order to get to 184.58, a close above 176 by Wednesday gets us to 180. Well, our first target has to be our upper kelp, 178.39, followed by 180, which is going to be a nice profit-taking level, and then 184.58. I'm looking at so many strikes, and I'm not talking about just weeklies. I'm talking about monthlies. I'm talking about bi-monthlies as well. I have a 190 target for this month. So I'm even looking at, we can go here. You can see to the left. I have 186.28 calls. That's this month's 28 calls, ending closing month. Why do, you, why do I choose this? Why do you ask Ninja, why are you choosing this? Perfect example, let's look at the monthly. You guys know what a box is. You guys know I love the box. What is a box you ask? A box is formed, actually, let me zoom this in. Actually, let's do this. I got a better idea. 
let's make this into one. This is gonna be my chart where I control everything. Show you just show you each individual chart. Okay, so this is the monthly, right? For VRTX. This is why I'm so excited. I've calculated the price movement, how much our premiums will pay, even positions that if I go heavy, this is why I said um Wall Street Jesus is going to see me on his scanner this week because I'm going to play smart with this one. And I'm not talking about weekly, I'm talking about with time. I'm going to buy in the money, seven points in the money. I will seven points out the money, but with at least one month's time. And this is gonna play out perfectly. And I'm gonna tell you why. So here I'm gonna show you guys the box. This is called a box. And how the box works, starts with a red candle. Oops. Starts with a red candle here. Then it starts with a green candle, which is like a spinning top or a small range candle. It can be an inverted hammer. It can be a, um, it, just a small range. Because any small range candles happening after a big red or big green, you can see a reversal coming in. And then we get this, the big green candle. This is called a box. I call it the box therapy, right? With this move, I can duplicate this box here, which I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna duplicate it with this move over here. And, if, and you, you probably laugh or you're looking at it like, okay, that duplicate, you just duplicated it and it's basically the exact same range as the current, as the current um, setup right now. So when this works out, we're going, like I said, we're gonna erase for SPY last month's basically range and we're gonna move that same range this month. So here, we're gonna take April's range and we're going to retrace that back this month with a target of 190, 190.25, right? The smartest thing to do here is take 190s for July, the first of the month. Very safe for those that are heavy like me or play big, you know, and play with time. A five-point move, you're definitely collecting 50% easily. And that's just in the week, in the first week. But with time, 5% of uh, a five-point, sorry, five-point move, or the next week after that eight point move, everything just adds up. So with this month, in April, we moved 28 points. In May, we had a big drawdown in May, but VRTX didn't budge, nice inverted hammer here. See, this is a box in reverse here with this big green candle, followed by a hammer. Couldn't close above 190.25, so so much rejection there, then it came down. This is a box, this is box 30, therapy in reverse this is bearish this is bullish so i'm looking for an upside 184.58 by next week if not next week the following week but that's when we hit the 190.25 so i'm looking for a move a 20 point move from where we currently are now minimum 15 points that automatically gets us to 84 184 and 190 25 because we're actually trading, see this range came all the way down. This is, this is actually, this, it's not engulfing, but it actually was an inside and then it moved outside. So it's a, uh, out, what is it, outside up, however they call those terms, blah, blah, blah. That's BRTX. I have my strikes in play. I'll show you, I'll show you guys here. I have the 175 calls for this week. I'm watching those. I'm looking for a possible pullback, maybe one small pullback. I look at every chart. I like to see on the weekly where it's, gonna, where it's gonna pull back to, but I don't have anything that's showing me a pullback any deeper than 172.50 max. But 173.22 to hold into Monday. You got the weekly showing here uh, a, another cross happening, which is going to change, and you're gonna see a nice vacuum up to 184.58. So I'm looking for 184.58 this week. Because if you, as you can see here on the weekly in the right, the, the left corner, bottom corner, when we got above 173.22, we tested it. We see this price always closed at that level, and I had a hard time getting over it. So we might see a range of almost 18 points this week. That would be huge, and I'm talking about huge. And that would pay out for us very big, especially if we take the 175s and the 180s. Not much resist. Most resistance is at 184.58, but the most resistance is at 190.25. So target for this one, I'm looking at 210 by year's end. 
for VRTX. Especially with that whole gene therapy thing that just came out, big. Next up, GWW. You guys know this is my baby. I love this play a lot. I'm gonna show you why. We have finally bottomed, and I mean finally bottomed. Took a while, but it happened. So slight double bottom at 255.06. This thing moves. When it moves, it moves. This is actually what started our, my 5K runner Monday because I played it smart. I played near the money. I think I played um, the two, yeah, we played the 260, 250 calls when they were trading at 260 because I know how this play works. And I'm like, you know what? It's holding. It's holding very well. Why not? And I was playing off for the four hour. This is what I was trading off of, this 14 or 30 SMA crossing. We have a vacuum happening this week to 286, possibly. Or next week, that vacuum is going to happen. I don't know how big that move is going to be, but it's going to be big. We have the daily here to the top right. We're trading inside of the 14 or 30 SMA. It hasn't even crossed yet. So once that crosses, look for some nice upside. By, end of, by year end, target is 300. I have even look at um, a play on that one for... Um, with time, did I? I got 726, 302, 50 calls and 719, 300 calls. I had the 275 calls for this week to open. But I know myself, I'm gonna treat this week as if it was last week. I'm gonna play it smart. I'm gonna play the 272, 50 calls. Because if they open it down, I already know, we already know, because I'm not gonna say I, because you guys watch, you guys played it, you guys learned. GWW likes to pull back on Mondays. If SPY pulls back and GW takes off, we have to get in GW. Not in a, in a chase manner, but if it's a chase manner, play in the money. Because GW is a ripper. It can go crazy. Six point days, seven point days. I called last week. I think it was Wednesday that we were going to have a six point day and we gapped up and we had this. It was actually an eight point day. Thanks to SPY. Because GWW was following SPY. It's bipolar. Some days it follows SPY, some days it doesn't. Now, I see something happening here. Not just a vacuum. Ooh. Okay, I, I might have stretched it a little bit. This is the monthly for GWW. I was saying 300 and what, 10 this year by January. We got 305 in three, in three months. Maybe in two to three months. Maybe less than that. But if GWW retraces this whole candle... From last May, that's putting us at 283. So this setup is good. This is a nice vacuum. We vacuumed down on three months. Why not vacuum up on two? And this month is not even over. So if we take over this, the 300 calls, ooh, I'm getting excited again. The 300 calls for GWW can work with time. I'm looking at, let me open my phone. I'm gonna actually gonna draw some fibs on this one too for you guys, give you guys an idea. So if I was calculating the basically off of this move, for this move to return itself, right? It came all the way up here from a gap, came down to here. This is the range. I use boxes because this is, it lines up with each candle as a whole. So if this is another candle, come back up and retrace here before going to new all time high. So 309 by August. So 300 calls, August 300 calls would be nice. There is no August, so we have to go October. Those are expensive, very expensive. But you get the idea. And, when, and another reason how I, I follow through with my plays and my options and why I choose them is because when I go look at the, when I do this, like I do the mimics and everything like that, the boxes, and I'm like, I look at the time that where it's going to meet that criteria or where I want it to be at. So I want it to be here for, the, for this 30 S in May. Let's say this, this, is the, this is June, July. So if I was looking at July, and when I go to July and I see that there's some activity in July, so I'm looking at July 19th, right? Yeah, no, July 26th, end of July. 300 calls are trading at 370, right? I'll take those. And if I go there and I see, oh my God, sometimes there'll be no, no um, volume. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of volume. And there's nothing wrong with a little bit of volume. But if you look at October compared to July, there's like, there was four, 
40 contract traded Friday, I think it was at $8 per contract for the 300 calls. Somebody's basically anticipating the same thing as I was, which is good. So I'm looking at those. I actually added that. Oh, yep. It's over here. I got all of these over here added with time. I have the weeklies in play for GWW as well. Let me copy. Let me paste the 27250s because I'm going in for those Monday. If any pullback happens. The expensive, this is actually what we paid last week. I'm also looking at SPY 300 calls. I saw the open interest um, in May when they went down. These are 621. Next week. This week is 14. Yep. So next, next Friday. 300 calls at 14 by 15 cents. Any pullback, any support low, like I told you guys on the weekly, if SPY pulls back to the weekly um, 14 SMA or the purple um, FIB, which is 276 something, 66, I'm going to take some, I'm going to take at least probably a hundred, you know, cause that has, that has time already. Those contracts hit a penny by the low for May. And now they're at 14 cents Friday to hit 18 cents on that big push. And then they retrace back at 14 cents. A lot of things on Friday at close pulled back hard, which was actually pretty good, but near highs. And I'm talking about premium in itself. So you have BRTX, core plays, GWW, major core play. GS is not a core play. It's not even on the list. This, I don't know why this is here. Oh, yeah, I had to do a duplicate. All right. Let me unlink. Let me change the color to maroon. Okay. Oh, I did maroon over here. Hey. All right. Green. Let's do green. Green here. Green here. Bring in here. Another one I've been watching, Prue, is another one. I'm pissed. I'm very pissed. Why am I pissed with Prue? Is because I've been watching Prue since 92. I watched Prue go from 106 to 92. I didn't take it. I didn't follow my gut because I was focused on other plays, and this is okay. But I at least want to have some type of position, some type of leg inside of it. One toe in the door, just a little toe in. This move off of the 9203, this fib, crazy. Bounced right off of that, and now it's at near 100. Very tight range on a four hour. Inside, inside. Target 103. I'm looking at the 105 calls for at least a 200% move. I was even looking at with time. Like, this bull flag is, is amazing. Look what they did here. They didn't even bring it all the way down. They held that 9203 area, or on the weekly, same thing as SPY. 30 SMA. Met is not done. I feel like Met is going to get news this month, next month. More news. More bigger news. This is the monthly. I see the monthly going to 106.28. Crew has only monthlies. So we're looking at, and I'll pull that up for you guys as well. I already put in perspective. 105 calls are trading at 20 cents. You have the, oops, I didn't add them. Let me add them. I, looked, I, was, I was doing a lot of research for you guys. The 100 calls, they're trading at 154. Remember that heavy volume 10K bought around, around a dollar something, I think it was, or, or around 80 something? Somebody's looking for a big move, or somebody's looking for something. It's not an earnings play. The earnings is July 31st. So this is an earnings, pre earnings run up. That's, that makes sense. But the earnings is what? June? No, yeah, June 31st. Or was it July 31st for Prue? I forgot what it was, but we'll get over that. Don't worry about it. Let me show you guys. This is, this is a beautiful setup. And when Prue moves, it moves. MET moves a dollar, Prue moves like 2 to $3. So use that also. This is the range we got. You see how this did? Inside. Inside, well, somewhat outside, then inside. Target 102.59. So those 100 calls are gonna, they're gonna pay possibly 75, 75%, 75% to 150% max right there with time. Um, but if it holds and goes to 
they can probably engulf this month as well. So I'm looking at a target of 108.63. So I also was looking at the 110s for proof, but not this month. If I'm talking too fast, I apologize. So July 110s, they're pretty cheap. 26 cents. And that's Jill. And I, the thing I like about proof, about monthlies, is monthlies are usually mid month. They expire mid month. So it allows you time to go into the next month. They don't expire in the beginning of the month, either mid month or, or end of the month. And that's what I love. So the 110s are pretty cheap. They're about the price of the 105s. So you wanna play, you wanna play smart? 110s. And that's July 19th, 110s. If you go into September, you're looking, you're, you're looking to pay. Actually, September, you're paying what you're paying for the, the 100s. So the 110s, you're paying for the June, whatever you're paying for the June 100s for proof, you'll be paying for the June, um, for the September 110s. So you could think of it like that, like, okay, should I spend 135 on the, the ones that expire this month, the 100s, even though they're near the money? Or I can spend 110 for September with even more time. But this is October and then September. What, 118 target? I'm looking for 118 by September. That happens. That's a, whew. How many points is that? 5, 10, 15, 20. That would pay about 7 to $11 in premium from 135. To hold that long, not bad. So it's like, like if I risk 5K in the 110s, let's say I did that, or 100, I'm making within July, August, two and a half months, I'm making 1,000% or close to it. Can't go wrong with that. You're buying with time. Some of us like to trade weeklies. You can also, and I, I tell a lot of you that trade common, there's nothing wrong with shorting your position with hedging you hedge you hedge your common do you long if you long tesla for example hedge with puts you know um if you short commons tesla hedge with calls weeklies collect collect on the collect on the end on, on the other end always good definitely met same thing for prue i'm not focused on met i have not liked the moves the, the past few weeks i have not um mo was on the list I got to put that out there, Mo's on the list. I like Mo over, and I will tell you guys right now why I like Mo over, and I was telling um, Sean about this too. I've been watching Mo, I just don't think it's ready yet. It's getting there. Because I've been looking for 55 before year's end. That was my target for Mo. S slight candle combo, but an inside on a four hour, still in a bull flag, or a cup and handle. That cup and handle pattern is still there. Maybe one more test, pull back to 51 or the 14 SMA. It's currently trading inside the 14 and the 30. Our monthly is going to be a monthly upside to like possibly 55 this month. Very possible. We still have a vacuum. We vacuum to the 14 SMA from this low. Now we need to turn this 14 SMA into support and then we're going to go for the 30 SMA on the monthly. For that to hit, I'll give it about, and I feel like there's going to be some news coming from Mo. Keep that in mind, too. So target this week, we're looking at about 53.43. So any pullback that we get, get into position. But I'm looking at the 52s. I'm looking in the money. I'm, I'm playing safe. Mo pays very well when you're on the right side. So I'm playing everything very safe and with time, as you all should. This is another great play. I wanted to show you Met, and I'm going to show you why we stopped playing Met. Some of, some of the team was playing Met because they liked it, because it was paying well. But I stopped playing it because I just it wasn't paying like it was in the beginning. When it starts paying, it's either time to short it on the opposite side, or it's just, it's just time to give it a, let it breathe. This is a pretty sexy candle combo. On that, and I like it a lot. I need to get over that 4919. It has some crazy overhead, it's been annoying lately. 
Is that, oh, it actually closed above that breakout level. So this is actually good, over 48.27. Nice hold above that. Bounce off that 47.98, which is the green bar. Oh, 48.13, sorry. But the fact that it's over 48, I remain bullish. It's a nice setup. I like, I like the chart a lot. Oh, that monthly looks nice. Sorry for the extra. Let's remove that. But that monthly is, is, is going to get aggressive. And I, my target is still that high that it had hit that day. 51.12 is my target. I actually haven't looked at, we need to look at time on this one. So with, with MET, I'm looking at, let's look at, because I like the 50s. I'm adding this to the list. The July 50s are pretty cheap. But I want, I want to buy with time. Red bars are always come very fast when a close happens above the gray bar. This is a monthly. This is a weekly. 49s would be nice for the weeklies. Somebody bought a few lottos. Ooh, there's 50. Ooh, somebody bought heavy puts for 48 calls, 48 puts last week. I don't know if that's a sell for a loss. But they did, they've been doing that a lot. Met is another good one. It's been trading above the 14 and 30 SMA, so we're gonna have some continuation. End of year, 55, very possible. So if I wanted to buy time with these, and with the ranges in currently right now, I would look at September 55s. That's enough time. You look at the range for that month. So it has a three point range with its monthlies, right? This one, 388, this one, 481, 379. And when I say three point range, that's average. This one was just a spike, so this is 484. This one was, this is not even done. So 49 comes, we're getting another dollar. So about four points this month. So by September, continue to go. Target purple, upper channel, which is still in a nice channel here. Possible end of year, 60. January 60 would be smart. You're not gonna, you're not gonna see much movement though, because it's gonna take some time. And they're 36 as well. But I like Met as well too. But those are the main focuses for this week. Core plays. We have ANTM also on the list. NVS is still the grub was crazy. We played 65 calls. We took the loss on those just earlier this week, and then those 65 calls <laughs> became. <laughs> profitable Friday. They actually were profitable <coughs> when we played them. They probably gave us like a 10% uh, gain and then they went worthless. And then they, be, they went to five, they went to a nickel by what? Thursday. And then they hit $2 Friday. I was pissed. Cause I was like, Oh, they wait, they wait. So grab has a nice candle combo too. close above the 65, 20 level, not oh, 64, 95 target for grub this week is 66, but grub is pretty expensive. But 69 calls this week, uh, very possible. Still in a nice wedge. Hasn't broke out yet. If it breaks out this week, get long. What are those? 621. 621 for Grub. That's next week. I got the 70 calls at the 21st. Next week, 70 calls at 88 cents closing. The low on those was 33. This folding wedge is very, very, very nice. Let me remove these fibs. You guys are gonna see some craziness. Seeing grub at 80, what, at 88? Now what is this, 82? Let me hide this curve. Perfect, so it looks more cleaner. If not this month, we're getting a vacuum to that 75 by next month. So looking at end of July, 75 calls on Grub. Nice lotto. Just a lotto with time. End of July 26. They don't have any. <laughs> we have to probably go to September, right? Yep. There is no 75s for July 26, which is interesting. But July 19, 75s are 120. 
and the 65's got a lot of volume. I gotta see what time they, re when, did they when do they report? Grub is another one on the list. They have a vacuum happening on the weekly, if not next week, the week after next. So, whew. Let's look, let's look. So not this week, the week after next, I said. Not next week, the week after next, which will be 28th. So the 28th, small 75 calls. Somebody picked up 40 contracts of the 75 50s at 43. I'll probably under, under, go under them on the 75s. You can even go under them on the 70s or the 74s. So I added the 75 calls for June 28th. This is this is looks like a, a nice kind of box. This is a weird one, but it's gonna it's gonna be a nice one. 14, 30 SMA, 30 SMA and 14, 30, 14 under the 30, 14 under the 30 on a daily, 14 under the 30, and price under the 14. Very bullish. Who stocks are getting a lot of attention also because of BYND? They're doing very well. Tyson, another one. I put uh, my boy Tyson for my daughter's account. That's actually down right now. She's still up though. She's still good. Um, target is seventy three ninety three within a week, but within a week and a half. So not next week. The week after next. Next week's the twenty first. This week's the fourteenth. The week after the twenty first is the twenty eighth. Keep that in mind. I added that also to our list. Got MET, Grub, I gotta organize all of these. Um, now, that's good for now, that's great, we looked at that. Oh, let's, let's, just, let's just review some plays we did this week. A lot of people get excited like, oh, that play paid us so well, let's play it again next week. Doesn't mean that it's good. Sometimes, it, I, if I'm exhausted from playing it, because I made a lot off of it, that means that I've, it, can, it can still keep going, but doesn't mean it's gonna still keep going. It's not going to continue to keep returning a thousand percent, a thousand percent. Once it hits, a gives you a thousand percent one week, doesn't mean it's going to give you a thousand percent the next week. It'll probably give you twenty percent of that inside week for yum freaking. Um, oh no, sorry, inside day on that four hour slight candle combo can definitely gap down. And he gap down to one hundred eight seventy seven. And a close above that on a Monday would be nice. My extensions keep changing. The way this thing moved is disgusting. This thing's been over over underrated for the longest since when it was under 100. I remember we was playing this at like 70s. Jesus Christmas. Imagine having some freaking leaps on this bad boy. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. I love to look at it. I like to look at it. I like to look at the moves they already made. That's Yum, you got Han, Hum. I always look at four hours. Four hours is always good to look at. Because if, if there's any gaps, or if the 14 or 30 SMA is below or above, find out as a support or resistance area when it opens on a Monday. Like, look at this, I wanna show you something. This is Han, right? Honeywell. You see this candle here, this pattern here, these two candles? A large candle, then a red candle. You see the same thing over here. Large candle, red candle, but it couldn't close above 173.13. We can get a pullback to 170.67. Also needs to fill that gap there. It doesn't necessarily have to, but usually happens. We get a nice pullback here. See how it opens up. Maybe it gaps down and then and then we have a 430 SMA cross here. So this is actually great too. So this can this will hold it, the price above. 169.91, which is our green level. Or mid-fib combo. I like the setup. 
It's very good. I want to see a little pullback in Han before it actually takes off. Target, 175.60. Right near all-time highs, too. Han's going to be another pep. Look at that. Jesus Christ. Please open us at 170.67. I will load up 172.50 calls for the week. Because once they, once they do that, because you know how, look at how pep did. Once they hit that all-time high, once a new all-time high happens, it extends. People start shorting it, shorting it, shorting it, and boom. Rips. 175.60. Whatever the medium is of that, of the 183 to 75, would be, I'll bring back to the gray level. We're looking at red bar, 177. Recap of Pep. That thing played very well. Crazy all-time high ripper. Nutty. Like, look at that. If they can pull Pep back to green bar, which is 133.03, or even 131.96, small started long or a small or a long long. So it could be a nice continuation, or it could be a it could be an inside week two. And look at that. Every time it extends, it either continues with a small range and flags, extends, small range, extends, small range, and then extends. It's knowing when to catch it. So here was big move up, small move, big move. Four weeks, big move, three weeks. Big move. Three weeks, big move. Two weeks, big move. Small week, big move. 137s? This is going to be a small range week for Pep. That's what I'm thinking. So the 137s here for six, maybe 628. I told myself I don't want to touch Pep again until it pulls back. But I like it. I like it a lot. 28 call, um, June 28th, 137s. They're pretty freaking cheap, too. 66 cents. They'll probably get a little cheaper on any pullback. I'm going to add that to the list. Last but not least, CTSH. I love this play a lot. Actually, let me, let me get you guys to the, the big charts. There we go. The four charts. Load it up, load it up. CTSH plays very well with FIBS if you line them up correctly. Candle combo at 62.85. I'm looking for a move to 64 finally. I need this gap to close. 64.31 and then we have 65. The low to close the gap on this was 65. This has come a long way. And it's done very well. Let's remove that. I like this weekly here. I like the daily here, nice pincher. 6609. Whew! Imagine that. These small little ranges, I'm just, it's very interesting. So what I do here is I'll draw an extension, right, from this low. I hate when TOS does that. Here we go. I'm going to draw from this low here. Double top. Possible. But we get that pullback over that double top, that will, still won't be bad. The double top is somewhere around high 62.90. Friday's high was 62.98. Well, we close above the 62.63 area, very important, which is the FIB area. Next target, 63.80. 
you could buy time on this play and you can make some money. Playing a weekly on this play, you have to catch it. <clears throat> and it's not easy. You have to catch it when it catches a low or a support. It pulls back. So let's say it pulls back and opens at 62.19. That's a 30 SMA on the daily. Weekly has a vacuum happening. We, I don't know when it's going to happen. This vacuum is coming. Monthly. Whew. I don't know what they're going to do. 68.74 will be the, the monthly close. How does the, 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 the June look? This is the last one I'm going over. Then we're going to go with the questions. Snap, I wish I, I played with time on that one. Meaning this week. Cause I, and I said it. There was going to be an inside day Friday. It was either going to be a rip or inside day. There was a freaking inside day. CTSH. CTSH. Pretty cheap. The 65.50s are cheap too. End of month? The 65s are cheap too. 50 cents. Depending on how they open. You got to look at things on how they open. If they pull back, if I pull back, and I will say this in every video, anything that pulls back Monday that makes no sense, grab a lotto. Let's say, um, oh, I got Regeneron on the list. Let's say Regeneron opens, because Regeneron is closed at 306, right? Let's say it closed at 307, and it opens at 303. Immediately grab 305 calls because if it doesn't make sense and then within five minutes, it's already back at 307 and now at 310. That's how we do it with GWW. Same thing. It's the same method. If it doesn't make sense, play, play that side. Like if it gaps down, don't automatically think, oh, it's time to short. If it gaps up, doesn't mean it's time to long. It depends on where it gaps up to and when it gaps down to. But if it's a spike down on no volume, and this is why I tell you guys, pre-market does not mean anything unless the volume is extensive, you know? So same thing with price. If it opens on 100, con 100 shares down five points and the bid is, let's say, on Regeneron 300, no, 303, and the ask is 310, and it opens down on 100 shares at 303, but it closed at 307 Friday, immediately. Go 30250s, 305 calls, or 307 calls. That changes in a minute. All right? So I'm gonna, now I'm going to stop the live recording.